Feast of Tabernacles, what Yahweh's feasts mean to us, mean to you, mean to me. Now today is part two of this meeting. We are doing the part two of the message. And it is day two. I was saying that Yahweh, who called Israel, had a plan for them. And that plan, would it be that they didn't understand or they were not hearing the word Yahweh was passing on to them, the instruction as it were the law? It didn't start with Israel. The call didn't start with Israel. It started all the way when man was created. And uh, from Adam to Noah, yeah, we continued. Now, yesterday we stopped at Revelation 11, 18. I read one portion of, no, no, we, we, we stopped, we stopped. We had just finished Matthew 24, that has to talk about um, immediately after the Great Tribulation, verses 29 to 31. But before then, let's catch up with where this uh, Great Tribulation, what it's all about, what Yeshua is coming in, or why he's coming in, and what he wants to do. Revelation 11, 18, he said it in a simple way, what is going to happen. Now, what the nations will be saying, their behavior at that time. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. Reading from Revelation 11, 18. And in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those, that is, saints, and righteous men and women, who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those, that is, kings, rulers, mighty men, rich men, small and great, who destroy the earth. So the reason Yeshua is coming back is to rescue. Because these wicked people are set to eliminate the earth and wipe the entire mankind. That is not their mission, but the activities will lead to that. Because they are already a massing weapon of warfare or weaponries to fight themselves. And in using all those weaponries, Eventually, they will not only destroy themselves, they will destroy the earth. So Yahshua will rescue the, the earth and rescue, you know, mankind, the remaining mankind at that time. Feast of Tabernacles is the third feast of the year, which includes trumpets. When we talk about Feast of the Tabernacles, it holds the last portion of the feast of the year, which includes trumpets, Atonement, tabernacles itself, that is up to the last great day. This feast reveals, what does this feel, feast reveal? This last, or this third feast, what does it reveal? What is it telling us? It talk about shelter, talk about boot, talk about, you know, enclosure, tabernacle, how Yahweh is going to tabernacle his people, protect his people, but this is what is going to happen. The, the one, the commander in chief that is going to do the tabernacle or protection of Israelites is Yahshua. So this feast reveals one, reveals Yahshua as the king of kings. Two, reveals Yahshua as the head and commander in chief of the new government of the earth that we 
take place after the old is removed. It, re it, re it reveals Yahshua as the savior, deliverer, and Messiah of the saints. For Yahshua as the judge of the whole earth. It reveals Yahshua as the judge of the whole earth. Five, it reveals Yahshua as the tabernacles of the saints. Yahshua is going to be the very protection. As we saw or we noticed in the Torah, where Israel, as when they were coming out from Egypt, he was their tabernacle. He was the pillar of fire in the day, I mean, in the night, and the pillar of cloud in the day. And he was their shelter, their covering, even in the wilderness, that sun, rain, and everything that are the elements out there was not able to destroy them or annihilate them. So he sheltered them. In this later days, both the Torah and the prophets reveal that the same thing will happen, you know, to Israel as per their protection, as per their shelter. So this feast is telling us what Yeshua, who everything is pointing to, who this the whole feast is pointing to, what he is going to do as a savior. How he's going to shelter, tabernacle his people. So yesterday we traced how mankind will, will willfully, you know, continue his separation from Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, and how they will continue to follow the adversary, Satan the devil, up to the time Yahshua will be coming back to shelter his people. Now, Revelation chapter 6, 12 to 17 reveals how the earth will be shaken to its foundation at the presence of Yahshua Messiah on his return to take over the government of the earth as the king, as the judge, and as the savior of the saints. The time of his return marks the opening of the sixth seal. We read in this um, Revelation chapter 6, about seven seals, you know, that will be open. So at the sixth seal and the seventh seal, you will see this tabernacle shelter. The feast of the boot will come into landlight. The message and the teaching will be opened to those who are today listening to Yahweh, hearing his instruction, following his teaching, they would then understand perfectly well what Yahweh has been working out in their lives. And that is why it is necessary that we are part of these feasts, so that we learn, we listen to Yahweh, hear his instruction, follow him squarely, so that we will not be missing out. When the trouble will ensue everywhere, we will not be caught napping. So that is why this, you know, celebration at this time is important. It's not just ordinary celebration. It's not just, you know, merriment and all that alone. It's not only time for rejoicing. Yes, which is key, rejoicing. Because in advance, Yahweh has showed us we are out of our trouble, salvation. He has opened to us in advance how that is going to be done. He's done it before, severally anyway. He did it in Egypt. He did it when the Israelites were even in their land. So many times he delivered them from the hands of their enemies and all that. He fought war. Yeshua showed up to Joshua. And Joshua said, said to Joshua, I am the captain of Yahweh's army. I have come to help you deliver the land to you people. That is redemption. That is salvation. That is victory. Then when they went to Babylon, we saw what Yahweh did. Through many kings, from Babylon to Mes and Pasha, the kings that were in, 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 in those lands, he used them to do what? To deliver his people back to the land that they have to rebuild Jerusalem and the walls of Jerusalem. 
uh, rebuild the, the, the temple in Jerusalem and the walls of Jerusalem. So this redemption work, salvation work has been on and ongoing now, but in this letter this is going to be final redemption. Final in the way that Israel will not be scattered or you know held captive again. They will live in their land and they will possess their land and they will even reign over nations of the earth. The sun will become black, that is in this letter days, that is what chapter 6 of Revelation is telling us. The moon will become blood and stars will fall onto the earth. The heaven will depart like a scroll when it is rolled back together. Mountains and islands will move from their position, from their places, they, they will move. The kings of the earth, great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, bond men, and free men shall sought protection from their governments. Listen carefully. They will seek help, protection from their governments, as governments of the beast, government of this world, and in the assemblies and in the houses of their gods. This is in their churches, assemblies, there is churches and houses where they worship their gods, their Elohim. They will say to the houses of their gods or the assemblies of their gods, their Elohim, and the assemblies where they bow and worship whatever they worship, they, they will ask all those that they are worshiping, fall on us and protect us from the face of Yahshua who sits on the throne and from the rot of the lamb. That you read from the face of Yahweh, who sits on the throne and from the rot of the lamb, because Yahshua is the lamb. For the great day of his rot has come, and who will be able to stand? Who? They at that time will realize that their works have been in futility. They will then realize that all their, uh, all the efforts, the deception, whatever they have been doing to tell human beings that they are able to even create human beings, even to make life longer than before, or even to give human beings a permanent life on earth, they will find out that they have wasted their time and they have believed, you know, uh, things that will destroy them. They have had their faith in one that will destroy them. For the great day of his wrath, they will say, the great day of his wrath has come. And who will be able to stand? This revelation by Yeshua was reported in the Gospels, including the book of Matthew. Now let us look at Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, will the sun be darkened? and the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then will all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his malachim, the angels, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of it to the other. Now, this sounds like the, the last stage of human history whereby Israelites that, has, that are left, because I believe, according to the writings of the prophets, Israelites will be moved down to their land, they will occupy their land, but at the time, Yeshua himself will be coming in. Now, there will still be remnants of Israelites that are here and there, and this will be at the end of the Great Tribulation, even at the end of Yahweh's rod then there will be final rescue of Israelites and those who made it. Well, 
I believe following what the word said here, the angels will do the rescue. Angels will bring them. And that will be meeting Yeshua in the air. And the sense perhaps it will be a welcome party. The sense will be in the air to welcome Yeshua right out there in the air. And he will descend at Mount Olive. And there, there will be marriage supper of the Lamb. Then his kingdom will commence. Now let's move on to the reason why human beings are still where they are and destruction is following them. Trouble is following them. We are still tracing this issue of rebellion against Yahweh and his word that has been going on. Now, the scripture is telling us that destruction will come upon man continuously as much as man continue to fool himself, give himself the kind of remedial doctrine that says, oh, don't look at Yahweh, don't look at his law, uh, by even by grace, just simple belief, then by grace he will save. And all that destructive message, the destructive uh, um, doctrine, which Satan put in the head of human beings, and all that is causing man never to look at Yahweh and his word. Why will so much destruction await mankind? Mankind is bringing this destruction upon themselves because of human rebellion, disobedience, and sheer wickedness against their creator and their maker. Yahweh is allowing this destruction in order to teach mankind that they simply cannot live in peace while they hate him and break his laws. Exodus 20, verse 2 to 17, Deuteronomy 5, 7 to 23, that catches or catch, uh, tells us about the Ten Commandments, which is the summary of the word of Yahweh. Now, that is what clearly they reject, they break. They are the name of Yahweh. They say they don't want to hear, they don't want to obey that name, they don't want to listen to that name, they don't want to bow to that name. And the word of Yahweh, instrumental, keeping his Sabbath, keeping his feast, and everything that follows, they say they don't, they don't care. They have their doctrine. They are going to heaven. They want to go and meet him, yet they are living in disobedience. What an irony. However, Yahweh promised protection for the elect, those who will obey every word that proceeds from his mouth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, and Luke 4, verse 4. Rebellion against Yahweh and his word is the cause of human problems and barriers. Yahweh preached the message to Adam and Eve, to Noah, to Abraham and his descendants, and to the whole world till today. Has there been any true repentance from the generality of human beings? The answer is big no. Let's now consider or trace further how human disobedience and disloyalty against Yahweh, their creator, has brought them to the coming great tribulation and the wrath of Yahweh. This is what is coming ahead of human beings. It's, you know, an oncoming um, trouble against humanity. Great tribulation and the wrath of Yahweh. The Bible said that is what no man would want to see or witness. And the scripture also said that it hasn't been, man hasn't seen such before. Man hasn't heard what they will be hearing at that time. And at the end of the day, after that, man will swear they will not depart from the way of Yahweh any longer. Starting with Adam, Adam was the first man created by Yahweh. Adam was also the first man to rebel Yahweh's word given to him in Genesis chapter 2. 
He disobeyed Yahweh and yielded to Satan's lies, as we read in Genesis chapter 3. And since then, all mankind went their ways and worshipped Satan, the one that caused the whole earth to fall, to sin. The Bible said Satan deceived the whole world or the whole earth. Now, Satan is the fallen angel called Lucifer, who was created as one of the gods, that is angels. Only few mankind whom Yahweh called out of Babylonian system, meaning Babylonian system means just confusion. It means confusion. Now, only few of them has remained truthful and obedient to Yahweh and his word. Only very few. All others, majority of other mankind have gone their way or their ways. The truth of Yahweh is his Torah, known as the word, instructions, laws, statutes, and judgments, and even commandments. Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 2. Anyone that keeps and obey his word shall obtain righteousness from him. On the other hand, anyone that forsake and reject his word shall perish. This is Yahweh's constant law, and it is standard. Obey, you live. Disobey, the person will perish. This is Yahweh's constant law sent out as a warning to the rest of this deceived world through his people, Israel or Israelites. Remember that Yahweh's truth that leads to righteousness, as we read in Deuteronomy 6, 24 to 25, is what mankind rejected and listened to as they turn to the voice of Satan. Thus, they worship God of this world. Satan, the Lucifer that failed, he is God. And he took that title and caused mankind to bow to that title, God, the Lord, up to today. Deuteronomy 8, 19 to 20 says, anybody that does that will receive destruction. Yahweh wants in that Deuteronomy 8, 19 to 20. Let's read it as we see in New Living Translation. We read it in New Living Translation. But I assure you of this, if you ever forget Yahweh, your father, and follow gods, worshipping and bowing down to them, you will certainly be destroyed, just as Yahweh has destroyed other nations in your part. You also will be destroyed if you refuse to obey Yahweh, your father. It's all about obedience. It's all about listening to the commandments of Yahweh, following his instructions. Now, anyone that says no to that and that by faith and grace alone, without obedience, they will enter the kingdom. Yahweh says no. Such person will not survive life, let alone entering the kingdom. Now, let's look at what transpired, why this rebellion continued and flood came about. Noah descendants and Babylon system. Let's look at what transpired there. Wickedness existed prior to the flood. The generation of Noah were so evil and corrupt that they were deceived by Satan to worship him. That is, those that lived in the days of Noah, they were rebellious, very, very wicked. The people were indescribably evil at one time that Yahweh could no longer stand to look upon the pain and suffering of mankind, which was unbearable. So he had to bring, you know, a measure to stop and end their wickedness and the suffering that was going on. All manner of evil was trending at, at that time or within that particular age. Cheating, murder, bloodshed, covetousness, cannibalism, cannibalism was everywhere. People, you know, there was this nephilims who existed. The 
angels that took women after, you know, as their wives, the children they bear, the offsprings, they, they were giants of those days. And all of them together were not only destroying, killing, you know, human beings, but they were eating them. Now, that is what is setting out in this age. Because even those spirits that we are imprisoned are going to be released according to the scriptures. They are going to be released. What would they be doing? <laughs> the same Genesis chapter 6 will, will be revisited. The world will return back to Genesis chapter 6. We are cheating, murder, bloodshed, covetousness, stealing, cannibalism will be too much to bear. Now, it was reported that the fallen angels, that's the gods, called the sons of Yah intermingled with women to produce the Nephilims who were terrorizing giants on the earth. Let's read this in Genesis chapter 6, 2 to 8, the New Living Translation. The son of Yah saw the beautiful women and took they, took any they wanted as their wives. Then Yahweh said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. In those days, and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth, for whenever the sons of Yah had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. Yahweh observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So Yahweh was sorry he had ever made, made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. You see, we are human beings, the activities of human beings, and these fallen angels caused Yahweh to regret ever creating them. And Yahweh said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the best of the sky. I am sorry I have made them. But Noah found favor with Yahweh. Now, look at the two types of people that existed then. The greater, larger, or majority of people were against the word of Yahweh. We are against Yahweh. And as a result, sin, wickedness, iniquity loomed over the earth. It was flowing like river, like water. And what happened in the end? We are told that one particular man who tried, like one in the days of Lot, Lot himself, tried to school these people, teach these people, but he could not. He was unable to convince people, was unable to bring people back to their senses. So Yahweh saw him as one who was faithful, keeping to his way, keeping to his law. So the Bible said he found favor with Yahweh. Why? How? Now, the reason is keeping the law of Yahweh. We cannot find grace. You can see that favor is grace, meaning of, the, of what they call grace. They say, just have faith in him, then grace will be pitted on you for you to uh, have righteousness and make it into the kingdom. It's never so. You must be obedient. You must be a law keeper. You must be a covenant commandment and obedient fellow. You must love Yahweh. You must do what he says. Therefore, because of all repentant sins of men, Yahweh sent the flood which destroyed all human life except the eight people, Noah and his family. Noah was saved because he obeyed Yahweh's instructions and kept his covenant. Now, 
continued with that age that was saved. Did everything go right? Somewhere along the line, things begin to go wrong again. Satan surfaced again. Nimrod's rebellion and the fall of Babylon. So here we get the hint again that Satan never stopped attacking the people of Yahweh. After the flood, men became evil again, worshipping Satan and yielding to his influence. Nimrod, the son of Cush, rebelled against Yahweh's word and refused to worship him. Nimrod, the great grandson of Noah, became king in the land of Shema, where he ruled people of the then world and sought worship from them. He made himself Baal, the Lord. He led mankind to worship some God. He was the first human beast that he was called Nimrod, the mighty hunter. Thus, Nimrod and his cohorts led generality of humanity to worship Satan. Now, Yahweh continued to seek to, to rescue man, to you know, lead man to his path, to his way. Now, there was this man called Eber, or Hebrew, and Abraham. Now, these men were called because like Noah, they follow the way of Yahweh. You see, this is like seed tracing from Adam to Noah to Eba, the Hebrew, then to Abraham. Now, this connection, Yahweh through these people continue to seek how he will rescue the earth and the deliver human being from captivity of Satan and the repossess the earth from Satan. Yahweh wanted to do it quietly, calmly, because he would have cleared Satan and repossessed the earth, but he wanted to do it in his righteous way, in his, because Yahweh is Yahweh of justice. He wanted to showcase to Satan that he is, he understands justice and he followed the instrumentality of justice. So he's still playing out what he wants to do as a way to rescue human beings and deliver the earth. So in the face of provocation, Yahweh did not relent to finding ways to save mankind, not minding how humanity rejected Yahweh and his word. Yahweh worked with Noah and Eber, who later became Hebrew. These people loved Yahweh and his laws, and they practiced it. Yahweh taught them his laws, statutes, commandments, and judgments. When Yahweh called Abraham and his descendants, he offered to make them a mighty nation if they would only keep his precious covenant commandments and laws, which would assure them life, peace, and joy in the land he allotted to them. Unfortunately, the descendants of Abraham later choose to worship the same deceptive God or the fallen angel and his demons, which Yahweh told them never to worship. Yahweh forbid human beings to worship gods. Owing to, choose, owing to the choice of Israelites to follow the Gentile ways or the life of the Gentile ways, the corrupting of the Gentile ways, Yahweh now said, okay, let me do something to these people. Send them to Egypt. Now, Yahweh told Abraham that his descendants will be sent to Egypt because in the land of Canaan, Abraham was like on a learning curve. At a point in Genesis chapter 17, we, we hear that Yahweh told Abraham, follow me and be righteous. Be blameless. Yahweh taught Abraham for years. It was 75 years when he got into that land of uh, Canaan. And at that particular stage, at Gen Genesis chapter uh, 17, uh, Abraham learned the way of Yahweh. But when you look at Genesis 15, that was, that is, Abraham was still, you know, 
struggling, fighting his way to come to knowledge of Yahweh. Yahweh at that stage told him, your children will go to the Gentile world, which was Egypt. And it was because of sin. Because Bible said that land was still, was completely land of the Amorites, the Canaanites, that we are sinners that never heard, obeyed, or followed the way of Yahweh. So his children will go to Egypt. We are the, at the time, I believe that at the, the very time Israelites went to Egypt, they themselves were also pursuing the Gentile lifestyle. But amongst the children of Jacob that finally went to Egypt, some of them were obedient. If they were truly following the way of your, why did they took their brother, threw him into the dungeon, even tried to kill him, to shed blood? And why did they lie? They broke all those commandments of Yahweh, even the Ten Commandments. They, they, they made mess of it. Because when Jacob asked them, where is your brother, Joseph? They said, oh, we don't know. Oh, he may have been killed by animals. Animals must have shed his blood, must have killed him, must have eaten him. They didn't tell their father that they sold him into Egypt. No, they tried to, it was one of them that preferred the spirit of Yahweh entered in him to say, do not kill this guy. Because at the end of the day, if you kill him, his blood will be upon their head. So they decided to sell him to Egypt. Well, even when they were committing that offense, when they were sinning against Yahweh, Yahweh was using it, turning everything to their own favor as well. Because someday, one day, there will be famine in the land that will almost rip off the land, and they will seek refuge somewhere to get food, even to find a way to, to, to live. And that was what they got from Joseph, who they hated, who they sold at the end of the day. So we find out that Israel going, by the time Israel, that the descendants of Jacob went to Egypt, they were already enjoying the, the, the culture, the values, the wicked ways of the Gentile world where they were dwelling in Canaan. And when they eventually went into Egypt, Egypt was the Gentile world. They were now, they had a field day to worship whatever they liked. Owing to choose their choice to follow their own wicked ways, to corrupt themselves and continue to do the corruption or to follow the way of corruption, Yahweh allowed them to go into the land of Egypt where every known God was served and worshipped. In the land of Egypt, they joined them themselves to worship the gods of Egypt. And this sin resulted to their affliction, persecution, suffering, slavery, bondage, torture, and death, which in fact caused death of many of them until they began to cry for deliverance. Breaking of Yahweh's law, which is sin, was the cause of Israelite's bondage in the land of Egypt. Under the bondage of the Egyptians, Israel experienced the consequences that God worship brings upon mankind. For 430 years, 430 years, Yahweh allowed Israelites to suffer at the hands of God worshippers until these chosen people cried out to Yahweh for mercy and for deliverance. At the end of 430 years, Yahweh sent Moshe, a righteous and humble man, to deliver his people out of the bondage of sin. Yahweh brought plague after plague upon the gods of Egypt and the people of the land. Yahweh showed his great power by executing judgment upon Egypt's gods. Yahweh also showed his loving concern for his people who had cried out to him, and he delivered them from Egypt out of the land of slavery. Exodus 20, 1 to 2. When you open Exodus chapter 20, which is the Ten Commandments and Deuteronomy chapter 5, the beginning of that Exodus 20, 1 and 2, talks about Yahweh's deliverance. Yahweh, their father, who delivered them from the hands of 
Egypt, the land of bondage, which they suffered so much. So it was as a result of worship of God, serving God, bowing to God, that caused their trouble. And as Yahweh predicted, by 430 years, when they would have stayed there, he would come to their rescue. He did. He never relented. Now, when they entered the land, did they do the needful? Did they continue the way of Yahweh? Obedience to the word of Yahweh and following Yahweh. They were disloyal. Their loyalty never lasts. Israel has sought their own rule, their own democracy. That was eventually what they came out with. Now, this was done perhaps to complete their rebellion, to complete their disobedience against Yahweh. While Israel were in the land of Canaan, they just, which they just conquered after returning from Egypt, they mingled with them again, sought after their gods and worshipped them. Why is this God worship? Why is this? Because this is how this, the Bible presented this God worship. Every now and then you hear Israelites worshipping idol, worshipping God, worshipping God, worshipping Baal. Why is that so enticing? Why is, so, is that so a, an easy way? Because in God worship, do whatever you like. And human beings like such freedom. Do it the way you, without recourse to what is true, what is right, what is pure, what is good, what is righteous. The way of righteousness human beings do not look or find or seek. It is difficult for human beings. That is why it's easy to rebel, Yahweh. But is it a burden? Bible said no. Because until we learn the way of righteousness, internalize it, it become our, you know, part and parcel of us, it become our value, we wouldn't know what Yahweh is talking about. We haven't taken pen to learn the good way of life, the righteous way of life. That is why human beings so love the way of Satan, the way of God, the way of the Lord, which is complete disobedience, complete going away from good, from righteousness of Yahweh. So Joshua warned them of the consequences of worshiping God or the Lord called Baal in that land of Canaan. In Joshua chapter 24, where he delivered a warning speech to all Israel, he made it clear that their rebellion against Yahweh will lead to their being destroyed and the remnants scattered all over the world if they would not worship Yahweh. Not many years after, Israel, Israelites were delivered from bondage in Egypt. They again turned from Yahweh to worship God or the Lord, which they were warned never to worship. They were told, you go the way of, of worshiping God, you will die. To make their rebellion complete, the people of Israel, who then delighted in what the people of the land were doing, their sacrifices. They were told them, when you get there, do not ask them, how do you worship your gods? But this is what they were doing. They were, uh, yeah, yeah, the way you worship is fantastic. What you do is glamorous. We want to enjoy, show us how you worship your gods. They learn their way. Like today, running to Christianity is easy. Islam is easy, Judaism is easy, and every other religion out there is easy because do it as you like, follow. So they departed from Yahweh. They asked those people, how do you worship their, their gods? And they, they told them, and they succumbed. So in doing that, they added to, they want to lead themselves. This is one issue, one area that Yahweh hold to his chest, that human beings will be led by him alone. Yahweh is our leader. Leadership of human beings is of Yahweh, not 
by ourselves. We cannot lead ourselves. So to make the rebellion complete, the people of Israel, who then dwelt in the land of Israel, with one accord, decided they wanted a government by the people and of the people. They wanted to be just like all other people of the world who are living on the surface of the earth. And they no longer wanted Yahweh to lead them and guide them. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 8, 4 to 9. Then all the elders of Israel are gathered together. Let's listen carefully. Because Yahweh has, the scriptures set exactly in perspective what has been causing this problem. Then all the elders of Israel are gathered together and approached Samuel when he was at Ramah, saying to him, You are old, Samuel, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Appoint us a king to judge us, just like all the other nations. But these things displeased, what they said displeased Samuel, especially when they said, give us a king to judge us. Then Samuel prayed to Yahweh. Yahweh answered Samuel and said, listen to all the words the people spoke to you, for they have not rejected you, they have rejected me, that I should not resist reign over them again, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt to this very day, they are now doing to you. They are forsaking me in order to serve gods, or their God, the Lord, which they know how to serve, their Elohim. So listen to them. However, solemnly forewarn them and let them know that the king who will reign over them will behave wickedly against them. Yahweh forewarned that the king would treat them as his personal property and their belongings will be taken away by the king and his hosts. The consequences would be, would be very huge and grievous to them. These warnings were passed to them, but they insisted they must have a king over them. Today, you can see that what Yahweh said in 1 Samuel chapter 8 is what is reeling out all over the world. The governments of the world, they are led by one leader or the other, either king or prime minister or president, or, and you, you find out that the record of many of these leaders who are unjust, not all of them though, Many of them are wicked because even in the land of Israel, later Yahweh appointed another leader apart from Saul. That leader was David who replaced uh, Saul. David showcased true leadership after the heart of Yahweh. He led following the instruction, following the law of Yahweh. Saul never followed Yahweh's law or Yahweh's instruction. What Yahweh is saying, Human beings, Yahweh will be the leader, Yahweh will be the king, but Yahweh will use human beings to lead them. The human being will do what we lead via the word of Yahweh, the law of Yahweh, the instruction of Yahweh. That was what David did, but that wasn't what Saul did. Saul was a man of his own, man of his own senses, a man of his own will, man of his own understanding, and our righteousness is a fairly rank. It, it, it leads to destruction. It leads others even to death. So that's what is happening in the world today. Many world leaders are taking cue or taking their instruction from the gods they are serving. And as they follow the God of this world, they get it wrong, they lead many astray. And many are crying. Many are, you know, there is trouble everywhere. But let's look at further instruction and what happened. First Samuel 8, 20 to 22. We want to be just like all the other nations. That's what we are telling Samuel to tell Yahweh. We want a king to judge us and lead us in our battles. 
Samuel listened to all the words of the people, then he repeated them in the hearing of Yahweh. So Yahweh instructed Samuel, listen to their demands and appoint them a king. Then Samuel said to the men of Israel, every man return to your city, because at this stage, he is ready to implement the instruction of Yahweh to give them a king. And at the end, we, we, we read that Saul was appointed, and that Saul was never obedient man. All that he was commanded to do was thrown on the ground, and at the end of the day, he himself never survived it, his family never survived it, and many Israelites perished as the, 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 his wicked way of ruling. But when David was appointed, David was, the Bible said, David obeyed Yahweh and he was a righteous man. So when David came on board, that was it. Israelites woke up again to the responsibility of serving Yahweh all through the time of David, up to the time of his son Solomon. After this, the chosen people of Israel had, sorry, after this, the chosen people of Yahweh had the king they wanted for themselves. Yahweh sent prophet after prophet to warn these people what government of the people by and by the people would bring upon all mankind, not only Israelites now, because Yahweh was using Israelites to deliver, to see how he can rescue the, the world, the earth, and repossess the earth from Satan. So what Israelites we are asking, sooner or later, the whole world we kind of copy it and it becomes the way of life. And from what that demand meant is what the world is going with today, which is democracy. Government of the people by the people, they say for the people. But in the sense of what transpired in First Samuel chapter 8, is government of the people for the people but for to set up against the people. No, no, against Yahweh, because the government of the people will tap instruction from Satan, who is going to be the author and ruler of the earth. So, following Satan, it means Satan is going to instruct human beings of what they will be doing on earth. So, it is the government of Satan, as simple as that. After this, the chosen people of Israel had the, the king they demanded. Yahweh sent prophet after prophet up, uh, to them so that they can have the government of their choice, including what, you know, the, 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 which is today called democracy. The servant of Yahweh, Stephen, recounted the history of the rebellion of the people of Israel. As a result of Stephen's witness against them, he was stoned to death. Stephen's testimony is recorded in Acts 7, 51 always. Now, in today's world, if you want to guide or bring the truth to bear upon any government, they will go against you, particularly the government that is following the way of the God of this world. Acts 7, 51. You stiff naked, Stephen wrote, you stiff naked, calling Israelites, the stiff naked people, stubborn and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Spirit, just as your fathers did, so you do also. So Stephen told them, you are the people that never obey Yahweh, never listen to Yahweh's instruction. You are stiff naked, you are stubborn, you are uncircumcised in heart, very wicked against the way of Yahweh. The resistance against Yahweh and his word is still ongoing today in our world. It's even worse in this age. Yahweh and his law have been rejected. Today, mankind embrace and worship Satan far more than the people of old. Throughout the ages, Yahweh has warned that the Babylonian system of the people, by the people, and ruled by Satan, will eventually bring destruction to this whole world. We noted the warnings of destruction that Yahweh has given to mankind throughout mankind's 6,000 year history. 
is now coming to pass. That which Yahweh stated, which he posited in terms of, in the way of creation, the one, the two, up to the six, which is by, you know, um, spiritual calculation, one day equal to 1,000 years. The, the world is at their 6,000th 6, year in history. And is coming to the end. And towards the end of this 6,000 years, there will be trouble. There will be, the earth will be shaken to its knees. Human beings will be shaken to their knees. And everything will be turned upside down. Darkness will ensue all over the earth. The world will no longer be the world as it were. People will literally cry for safety. Those that were doing evil and the, the righteous will cry, but help will suddenly, somehow help will suddenly come. And it will come for those who are obedient. All that Yahweh is talking about is obey, 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 obey. Today, technology has, not, has developed to the point that all life can be wiped out by the detonation of only a few of the nuclear weapons which are currently stopped stockpiled. Anyone who, who should be able to see that this world cannot continue to exist under the leadership of man, as people can now look at and say, indeed, based on what Yahweh has been saying, based on what Israel requested that Yahweh is approved, though he allowed them, that human beings ruling themselves, literally at the end of the day, wipe themselves. Why? Man has consistently and persistently followed the way of unrighteousness. And no matter how one trusts in that, he will end up in destruction. Unrighteousness, breaking Yahweh's law, not following the pathway of Yahweh, leads to destruction, leads to death. Not that Yahweh causes it, though, is the act of one's disobedience, one's evil, because the mindset of human being in that way, in that part, is full of wickedness, which leads to doom, which leads to damnation as well. So that is what is facing human being in our world today. World leaders admit the fact that for this world to have peace, this world must have a one world government. They, they are seeking for peace. They are looking for peace quite all right. So they are now saying, we have failed ourselves governing our nations, our countries individually. Let us find a way collectively to have one government where one person will be at, as the head. And this is the beastly government that is coming. That will be capable to enforce peace, putting down rebellion and the resistance against it. So the very government they are seeking, they will put so much laws that indeed anybody that is not following their own you know, laws, and their laws, you know what is, because they are already on the path of re rebellion, their laws will be laws that are anti-Yahweh. So anybody that will not follow that laws that are rebellious against Yahweh, that person, they will put him away because they will think that person is not seeking for peace. That person is seeking destruction of their government and their way of life. So they will put that person away. So in a way, they are seeking peace in their own way. But can they get that peace? However, for such a government to abide indefinitely, it must also have fair and righteous laws. Laws which are just and equitable for all inhabitants of this world. This is exactly the kind of kingdom which will soon take over this world and its present man ruling governments. Because human beings will not succeed. At the end of the day, a new government, government that is clearly predicted in Daniel chapter 7, the government that is that stone that was made without hand, that Yahweh himself caught that he will send into this world that will shatter the government of the earth. And that government is the only government that is going to bring peace. Remember, 
we are told in Jeremiah 31, we read, is it Jeremiah 33, that he is Yahweh's righteousness. So that government is going to bring righteousness. Righteousness is given through, you know, law, righteous law, holy law, law that is from Yahweh himself. So that government of Yahshua is going to bring holiness, righteousness, and the wonderful way of living, and it will usher only peace and peace alone. Because mankind cannot and will never have laws that is righteous and holy. They will continue to give themselves wicked laws that is filled with corruption and wickedness. This kind of law and rule will surely bring the kingdom of wicked mankind down. This is where Yahshua would return and rescue the earth and save the remnants that serve and worship Yahweh. In the book of Revelation, in chapters 8, 9, and 15, we read about the seventh seal of Yahweh. The seventh seal pictures a time, a time span in the history of mankind, which encompasses the beginning of the great tribulation through the time known as the day of, sorry, through the time known as the day, the day, day seven of Yahweh. That is the seventh day. And that seventh day, the seventh trumpet is there to be sounded. The seventh seal, the seventh seal will open to the seventh trumpet and a lot will be happening there. The day of the day of Yahweh, the, the great day of Yahweh, the, the, the bowl, the bowls will be opened to pour out what it contains. And also there will be the opening of you know, the rot of Yahweh. The rot of Yahweh will be poured onto man, to the wicked. That will be the final judgment that will be meted upon the wicked upon the, in this earth. The seventh seal also pictures the means that Yahweh will use to take over these certain led warring nations, bringing these nations under his control. When the seventh seal will be accomplished upon the earth, then this planet will be under the one world government of Yahshua's hands, Yahshua's kingdom. That is the kingdom of Yahweh. So the one world government the world is seeking is already in the Bible we are reading. It's already in the book of covenant that Yahweh is bringing one world government under the headship of Yahshua. Yahshua is going to be the commander in chief, the king of kings the Messiah of mankind, but they are trying to copy, copycat, copycat. In their wicked and crooked ways, they are looking at what Yahweh has put in place. But would it work? They are seeking righteousness. And they are seeking righteousness based on their own mindset, based on their own knowledge, based on their own wisdom. It will work. The righteousness, righteousness of man is a filthy rag. It does, it even destroys man, doesn't help man to live. Now, in all this, in all this, Yahweh is asking us to strive to escape, work hard to escape. How can we escape all this? Now, how can we escape is the question. To all those listening today are invited to escape the coming troubles. This is not a joke. This is not a main message that is out there that we hear in religious world today. This is what is coming. This is said by Yahweh himself, given to the prophets to speak to us. All the prophets, nearly all of them, spoke about the last days of human history. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to, no man can deliver himself. Those who will be delivered at all are those that are keeping to the word of Yahweh. Yahshua Messiah said in Luke 21, 34 to 36. So be on your guard. See to it that your minds are never clouded with carousing, drunkenness, or anxieties and worries, or pursuing of 
things of life, of this life, so that that day will not come upon you unexpectedly, for it will come like a trap on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Because of this, watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. As sure has encouraged us, what are we looking for? He has given us all the weapons of escape, all the guidance, all the pathway, which is in the word of Yahweh. Love Yahweh, follow his instruction, keep his commandments, then continue to look unto Yahshua as you make this journey. That is the way to escape. When Yahshua spoke these words of inspiration, he was contemplating and expanding the plan of protection which is offered to all of Yahweh's called out children or people. The body of Messiah, this called out people are called the body of Messiah. He was also meditating on the horrible things that are coming on this planet Earth. Yahshua knew the devastation that would come upon mankind because of mankind's own government, wicked ways they have been following. However, Yahweh does promise a way of escape. This way is in Yahweh's plan of salvation. This way of escape from the things to come is revealed in this, you know, in all the Bible we read, Genesis to Revelation, the way to escape is revealed there. And all this morning we've been talking about how to escape, obey Yahweh, obey Yahweh, follow his instructions, follow the law. That is the way to escape and baptize yourself in the name of Yeshua, so that you'll be given the spirit that will guide you, particularly in these latter days, because the spirit will be at work like no other time in the history of mankind. Please read it, read the word of Yahweh, follow his instruction, have understanding to it. If you don't have, ask somebody to help you, and Yahweh will intervene for you. Yahweh will speak to you through anybody he sent, to help you out. May Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh continue to strengthen you. May Yahweh continue to help us all so that in this call, we don't fall short of his glory so that we make it when he will return. When the time will come, when the great tribulation will ensue, because the trouble will be everywhere. After the great tribulation, then come the wrath of Yahweh before Yahshua will come. People will cry. They will think Yahweh is no longer there. People will cry. They will think Yahweh is no longer listening. People will cry. They will think Yahweh has gone abroad or is asleep or is no longer listening to mankind. Or that the whole mankind, the whole of lot of mankind will perish. No, not all will perish. Those who pay attention will be saved. Amen. Those who keep his word will be saved. Those who obey him, those who are following Yahshua, those who are baptized in Yahshua will be saved. Amen. He is giving this message not to cause us uh, to fear or make us afraid. He is giving this instruction so that we wake up from following God of this world, following Satan. When we return to him, what is it all about? All he's saying is he's going to protect us. He's going to save us. And that is why he's talking about shelter. He's talking about tabernacle. He's talking about, you know, protection. He's talking about this feast of boot which we are celebrating today. This Feast of Tabernacle, this is exactly what is coming in these latter days, that Yahweh says, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to save you. And who will do that? To who the feast is pointing to? Yahshua Messiah. He is coming. He's coming to rescue. Are you ready? Are you following grace, 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 grace? Just faith and grace, then you make it. No. Yahweh says, obedience, obedience, obey my word, follow me, listen to me, baptize in the name of Yahshua, have faith in him, then you'll be saved. That is the way to go. May Yahweh deliver us. May Yahweh grant us all that we need to be obedient Amen. and be saved when he will return in Yahshua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen.